University. Today we're speaking with Nicole Pryor of St. Benedict's Catholic Parish in Burwood. As with these programs, first we'll explore the spiritual perspective uh, for Nicole in this case, and then in our second program, determine the ways in which that's been applied in her life and how it has effect in society. Thanks for coming in, Nicole. Good to be here, Noel. You're a Catholic. Mm -hmm. Tell me how that happened. You were born a Catholic? Yes. Um, yes, so I suppose that that's much a part of it. I was born a Catholic. I was brought up very much in the Catholic way. Um, I went to the Catholic school with the Catholic nuns. I had, uh, we would go to church on Sundays and things like that. So it was very much um, a part of my upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that there's quite a lot of spaces where I've thought I better just you know look at other faiths. I don't want to be conditioned to be something or be a product of my environment. Mm -hmm. So I have tried very hard to look at other aspects and mm -hmm. see other people's ways of doing things and and keep on coming back to my Catholic faith. Mm. So it's been a constant process. Now you're from South Africa. Where does the Catholic faith sit in South Africa? How strong is it? Well, actually, amongst the African people, it's a growing mm. faith. It's quite different it? from Europe, where mm. it's declining, and you've got lots of wonderful churches and so on, which are rather barren and empty now. Mm. It's a very different uh, form of faith. Mm. The African people have got that vibrancy, and they, you know, instead of sitting in serene meditation and things like that, they want to be doing their dancing and shouting their shouts and things like that. That's their way of being, their way of praise. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's also just so much more more um, alive the faith to them because life itself is so much more questioned. Mm. They are in fact so alive, they're not caught up in the typical things that we are caught up in mm. with this life of materialism and acquiring things of prestige and position and things like that mm. because of where they're at and because of their seeing the reality of life as well. Mm. They are led to seek that deeper meaning which I think is a a good thing, mm. and that's why they're growing. Now, the time that you were there that was during apartheid, wasn't it? Yes, wasn't it, it was. I was brought up in that apartheid. Right. And then you had, so in the Catholic faith, like yes. as a child, yes. would your church have had uh, Africans in it, or would it have been all white? Yes, it was. It was, uh, but they were tended to be quite separate. So still mm. to today, the way the European Africans celebrate their mass and mm. uh, like to live their spiritual way and seek spirituality is rather different from that of the African people. So they like to go to a mass and they want to sort of hear this word that they can grow in wisdom from and they want to, in a more quiet, uh, perhaps introspective way, is how they are growing in faith mm. whilst being sharing with others. Whereas the African way is not quite what they are wanting in that serene inner self type of spirituality. Yes. So you'd find they would be celebrating also on a Sunday, but they want the whole of their Sunday to be this mass celebration. So they um, tend to meet perhaps at a later time after the, the quieter people have had their one hour of mass. They want to um, then have their celebration and they want to have their dance and they want to draw everything out and make it their day mm. of celebration. And, um, and so they tend to do it differently and, and that's okay. But so it's not a, um, a, a being told to, but it's just the choice of individuals and their way of wanting to, to mm. live it and find it. And Do you think that's had any influence on your way of being Catholic, to have experienced that to, from the start? Um, I think it's 
slight influence, not a huge one. I think the African way has a lot of influence on my life in in undertone sort of ways, little ways. But uh, my actual faith, um, I don't know that it's affected that much, no. Mm. So you went to a Catholic school. Yes. What happened then? Did you, you go on to work and continue in your Catholicism? Yes. Um, mm. So I would say, you know, coming back to perhaps to the Catholic schooling, there was um, a few encounters I had of the spiritual sort, which really, I think, set that pathway in my life. Mm. Um, aside from what I got through grandmothers and, and seeing the people around me and the direction, the focus, the uh, reason for living, the meaning for life itself that kept them ticking. Mm. Um, Sister Imelda is, I think, perhaps the first person who got me started in a way that um, set a spark, that created a flame that could never quite die. It would perhaps okay. dwindle in size a bit, but um, yeah, things like that. And so Sister Imelda was, was at, the, at the school, was it? Yes, the, she was yeah. an Irish nun who mm. just had this sort of amazing vibrancy and love and she just sort of had this uh, inner joy and uh, she would come up to everybody and have never enough arms to hug everybody. But she had this amazing spirit in yes. her and she, she used to do her choir and we used to be the sort of top performers because she just had that way of getting everything out of you and that love, making you love what she loved. Mm. and which was just quite, quite incredible. Yes, people like that are, are pretty dynamic and, and important in your life. With, with, with uh, Mass, the, you said there were some sort of high points, little sparks in your, in your childhood. Was Sister Imelda the only one or were there others? No, there were others. There were quite a number, actually. You know, I sort of even remember seeing the odd sort of little, what was a film in those days when you'd go into a dark room and the projector would be behind you. Yes. I remember sort of seeing some of our Catholic faith and it just, um, it, it started, it created an excitement. Mm. A... Um, a meeting of something or someone I know and wanting mm. to find out more. And, and as a young little, little girl, knowing that um, there's something way beyond the here mm. and now and that this little life of 60 to 80 years is really just the blink of an eye of what is eternal. Well, it's an appropriate time with the blinking of the eye. We'll blink the eye and we'll go to a break. Okay. <laughs> We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity. We're speaking today with Nicole Pryor of St. Benedict's Catholic Parish in Burwood. We were discussing your experiences, uh, Nicole, mm. and you mentioned Sister Imelda and mm. the film, etc. Mm. What are the sort of high points in your Catholic experience yeah. come to mind? Well, again, I think that they're quite a lot. Um, I think from a young girl, having heard how I'd had bad meningitis and kephalitis as a baby and they thought, mm. you know, I would be um, dead and if I had survived I'd be brain damaged and things like that and I think that those sort of things had made me question things a little bit and well mm -hmm. if I've got this maybe a second chance and you mm -hmm. know what is it all about things like that mm -hmm. and um, and I think perhaps with Sister Imelda and that sort of spark amongst others um, as a young girl I used to then go into prayer try prayer and um, I wish as an adult I could achieve what I used to achieve then. So I think it was just that, and I know that at that young, young age, it's not what as an adult you could shape or be told to believe and then hence create. Mm. But it was a very um, personal encounter I used to have. Mm. And I remember those evenings of prayer and just being in a state of absolute sort of rapture and or oh, and that personal relationship I was able to create with not just creator or the divine or but the man Jesus Christ himself mm. which is what um, then was that root of my following that faith was a, a steady 
almost conversation type chat, but a, a knowing and awe of the presence of mm. this um, God himself in human form, Jesus Christ. And how old were you at this particular time? You know, I've wondered that, but it was certainly in my junior school years, and I would say it was through those latter years of what here in Australia would be years four, five, six, mm -hmm. when I was at that sort of peak of that yes. um, and used to experience in prayer what I, I wish I could these days. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that was certainly the beginning of, of my motivation for life or what it is that, that um, makes life worth living, the reason for this short life mm. in preparation. Mm. There's an experience of sort of a, almost an ecstasy by the sound of it. Absolutely, actually, mm. or mm. ecstasy, not, uh, not knowing or being aware of time, mm. just that, um, you know, sort of remember, in fact, how as a little child, my eyes were just sort of poor with just um, an awe. It was just um, a wonderful experience and, and not something that was led by someone else no. or um, followed by reading a book or anything. But it was a childlike way of kneeling down and opening to and, and hence receiving. So in that, you obviously ha got a a high awareness, or at that point had a high spiritual awareness. Mm. So you went on, and you mentioned the fact that you have experimented with following other faiths. Mm. What were they, and how did that come about? Mm. Well, I think one of those sort of things that I actually regret, which mm. almost put an end to that, was um, I having a very close friend who was very into um, the sort of reborn Christian way. Yes. Uh, and hence believing that many things about the Catholic faith are evil, in fact, and, you know, the, you, you can't, um, or it might be the, the evil spirit at work in these things, which made me hesitant, stand back and need to question things about it. And I think it was, again, with life being this whole journey, we realize in the end how we grow through it all. Mm -hmm. And we need those times of questioning to find uh, a deeper understanding of the real truth that we never will understand, but get tiny <laughs> little specks of right. or glimpses of. Yeah. But um, so in that way, you know, no harm was done by it. But that was the first questioning that I had of mm. this faith. Mm. I know that um, going to their gatherings mm. and um, their whole approach to being reborn and um, and that this Catholic faith that believed in the things that sets the Catholic faith apart, perhaps, which is our belief that the mother of the man, we believe human God, man, Jesus Christ himself, um, that our belief in having any um, respect for or, or relationship with the woman who was his mother, uh, that that was a very wrong thing. and. Um, you know, lots of other little things about the Catholic faith that mm. I think people know well mm. and that I don't need to go into. So those sort of things made me withdraw from it all, thinking I better just start looking at things and right. seeing mm. what is in fact right. Mm. Mm. And and that's that's understandable in, in that. So you, you asked the question, mm. you had a look, mm. and where did your answers come from? Well, as I say, that, that was a number of years, um, and I would say right through my senior school days, there was quite a lot of that. There was my basic Catholic faith that, that did keep me going, and I think I went back to after a couple of years, but it kept me questioning. It kept me thinking, I must just know for my own self that it's not um, a shaped environment that I'm brought up in, mm. thinking if I was born into a Jewish family, I would be Jewish. If I was born mm. into a Buddhist family, I would be Buddhist. So what is it that's making me as an individual choose a faith, a way of um, having my relationship with our Creator, our Divine, that we all have different ways of looking at? Yes. So you were cons 
conscious of a of a, of a prism, uh, yes. which other people perceive it differently through the same prism. Absolutely. Mm. And did that? Did you turn to anybody uh, at this time? Did you turn to a sister, a Melda, or someone like that? Well, I think that I've sort of tried reading lots of books and hearing mm. um, different uh, approaches mm. to this. But I did have available to me mm. more of my Catholic friends and that sort of approach. Mm. And something which we don't have more available is actually time. Yes. So we'll actually go to a break and we'll pick sure. up in a moment. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity, and today we're speaking with Nicole Pryor of St. Benedict's Catholic Parish in Burwood. Nicole, you were mentioning the fact that in negotiating your way through uh, a religion which is Christian but not Catholic and so they were you were taken down pathways of criticism etc you found that uh, to reinforce yourself uh, one of the things was Catholic friends how did that work well I think there were a few of them but mm. my very special friend to this day is Jane mm. and um, and she was one of those people in my class at school who was perhaps not such a, a cool one you know she mm. wasn't um, the uh, sort of mixing with the right people or doing the sort of typical things that teenagers mm. might like to do but she was academically correct and she was first team hockey and she ended up being head girl at our school and things like that and um, and when we were in the same small little art group in our final years, because I actually dropped that subject, but picked it up in my final years because of what I wanted to study thereafter. Mm. And uh, she and I sort of hit it off. Mm. And she is one of those people quite unique, and I mm. don't know quite where it stems from, but she loved the Catholic faith. She's a very spiritual person. Mm. She's one of those people who to this day has just given and given and given of herself. You know, she sort of, any talents that are given to her are for the purpose of serving others. Yeah. And, um, and that friendship we struck up then was just something that, you know, used to feed a fire within, not uh, create anything, but just mm -hmm. we would be chatting until late at night. And it was just um, one of those wonderful things, something where conversation can be such an excitement again not what intellect can do but when it sets the spark of spirit in you mm -hmm. and um, and then I was very lucky I think you know blessed that we ended up being the two from our Johannesburg school that went to Cape Town University and so we sort of continued that amazing friendship through there and um, and I never did stop questioning other things. I saw my good friend Jane as being that one who's in that capsule who loves and believes only this Catholic church um, and thought that I'd better then, you know, just keep on questioning other things. But in that conversation with her, I always um, have learned a lot. And through that and my close friendship with her came to start trying the things that she did mm -hmm. and being um, fed by daily going to our mass. Yes. One of those things that just has been my my strength, you know, mm -hmm. more more important to me than brushing my teeth every day. It's just that <laughs> thing that that gives life meaning, that, mm -hmm. that feeds me. It's that time out, it's that mm -hmm. sustenance, it's um, what I've come to love more and more the more I look into it. Mm. And the more I study it, the more I see it, the more definite and great that picture is, the more I realize how little I do know, yes. but the more um, awesome it mm. becomes. Mm. Yes, well, in the next program, we, we'll be talking about the RCIA, mm. which uh, leads you to learn more and more. You mm. might explain what the RCIA is for people who don't know what it is. Yes. Well, um, the RCIA is the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. Mm. So you get one with the C at the end, which is for children. And this is very much for those who 
who want to become Catholic, and we were saying the word Catholic, if you look at the origin of Catholic, is our Christian faith. It's with a small c. It's not this group of Christians called Catholics. And um, so just for this time being and because where I've been led, it's not mm. been the reason why I tick or my vocation in mm. life or anything, but I've come to know you through that little mm. element of it. Mm. And, um, and yes, I certainly do enjoy sharing with other people who might be inquiring into this Catholic faith. Yes. And... Um, and I think, like all things, in giving you receive, mm. I realize more and more how little I know. Like, yes. you know, any great astronomer or scientist will tell you the same. The more you know, the more you realize how little you know. But in that realizing, find out more. And on finding out more, grow in a greater awe and, mm. and love for it. Mm. Finding the facts. So you, you, there's, a, there's a process of enrichment happening uh, in in your faith even to this day absolutely mm. you know i think as as i've heard time and time said you know it's no relationship can ever cease to grow i remember listening to and i forget the name of celine dion's husband and mm. he spoke about how when they had met and by the time they got married he was madly in love with her mm. And she's been with him through all sorts of ups and downs in life and so on. And he said he was in love with her when they got married. Mm. But now there isn't the word. Mm. And I think it's the same sort of thing in any relationship. Our relationship with whatever you want to say, God, creator, divine. Um, and with my faith, my way of seeing that, the mm. glasses I wear, the, uh, to have that relationship with God. My belief that Jesus Christ is the man, God Himself, and mm. um, so yes, again, it's it's it goes beyond a love. It goes beyond a faith, because to me, the word faith seems a almost a blind believing mm. of what you've been told to say. I will believe it. Whereas faith, I think, becomes something so much more than that. Mm. It's. Um, it's 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 intellect, it's emotion, it's um, that inner depth of being that is something that ignites, sustains, and and makes us grow in a greater and greater awe because we realise how our little human mind cannot <laughs> begin to comprehend and and um, yes. the. You know, it's, it's, it's like I always sort of think of this massive line of, mm -hmm. you know, where I might be in this line of knowledge and where you might be and where somebody who knows nothing might be. But as we, mm -hmm. you know, draw our perspective out on this, it's, it's that tiny dot of that same sure. one long ruler that we are on. Sure. So Thank you. Thank you, Nicole, for that lucid explanation. That, that's a beautiful explanation. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll have agreed to come back for the next program, I understand, and we'll talk yes. about RCIA. Okay, good. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week when we'll be speaking with Nicole about the RCIA. Baha'u'llah, Shantiyon.